So it looks like I was right? Alright, so we last let off, left off with Red's Polyworld getting zapped and Lieutenant Surge showing up. And at that point, we weren't 100% sure what the deal was, but now it's a hot... I am 100% clear, 1-0-0, zero, zero, that Lieutenant Surge is a bad guy. He, he see, turns out that he's the one who's been stealing all the Pokemon shipping them off to other places, selling them, doing whatever, and he claims that he's freeing them. And so he attacks Red with a horde of electric-type Pokemon. Things are looking really bad for Red at this point. He, he's got Lieutenant Surge who's surrounding him. He's trapped on a boat, basically. And now his Poliwhirl's hurt. So, by, through battling uh, Electabuzz, he somehow escapes. Him and Poliwhirl end up escaping, and they're, they're trying to find a way off the boat. However, since they are on a boat, it's kind of hard to figure out, well, like, well, they're just going to jump off or what. So, they, they finally find a spot where they can kind of rest and try to figure out something. Doesn't take very long for uh, Lieutenant Surge to find him. And they once again get attacked by Lieutenant Surge. My dog over there. <laughs> um... Lieutenant Surge once again zaps Poliwhirl, knocking it out, and ends up throwing Poliwhirl off the boat into the water, and Felicia, <laughs> and then ends up throwing Red out into the water for to just let him drown, I guess. And that's when things that we hit another point in this manga where things are a little bit different than the usual. They're different from the the anime or the uh <laughs> different from the game certainly so red's drowning polyworld's also off into the water who can save them well polyworld's gonna save them but it's not polyworld that's gonna save them it's actually polyrath because polyworld evolves without a water stone into a polyrath saves Red, jumps back up there, and kicks some major butt, taking out all the electric-type Pokemon. Whatever. I, I'm, I'm not, you know what, after everything that's been going on in this manga, I'm actually okay, sort of, with Poliwhirl evolving into a Poliwrath without a Water Stone. I'm okay with it. It makes for good entertainment, I guess, at this point. So, basically, it ends with Poliwhirl taking them all out, uh, the police are called, and they don't really touch on that part very much, but Red finally saves all the Pokemon that have been stolen, so they're, they're getting them off the boat to meet their, new, meet their trainers again, and the Pokemon fan club president shows up, and he's like, where's my Abra? Where's, where's my, where's my cute Pokemon? Where is it? Red's like, well, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is, I did save your Pokemon. The bad news is, it's no longer an Abra. And... <laughs> seeing as the Pokemon, for, uh, the, the Pokemon president is really into cute Pokemon, it's kind of a... sour grapes kind of moment. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, that's basically how it ends. Well, there is one last part where it basically cuts to... Red getting ready to compete in a bike tournament, which goes through uh, whatever the route is that's east of Vermilion City, and then it goes up through those docks and uh, towards uh, Lavender Town. That's the end of the thing, so we don't know what's going on there. But I like this. I like this chapter a lot. I thought it was really interesting and fun. I liked the ending with the. Uh, Pokemon Professor Zabra evolving into an Alakazam and him being like disillusioned by it. Uh, I'm okay, again, I'm okay with Poliwhirl evolving into a Poliwrath. I kind of wish that they had had maybe a frame where it was like he found a, poly he found a water stone in the ocean, but whatever. 
Um, that'll be my head cannon. Probably will fi happen to find a water stone, whatever. Um, but I really, I, I, I like the battling. Once again, what the heck? What the hell? Okay, so you got Koga seemingly at least at this point. We have not heard anything conclusive. I will give them, I will give it that. But it's gotta be Koga that is a member of Team Rocket. And two, two, now you have Lieutenant Surge, who is supposed to be the all-American, like, war hero, smuggling Pokemon, stolen Pokemon, stealing Pokemon, selling them off, and being a bad guy. Why are these gym leaders bad guys? In all of the other forms of this genre, of this series, the gym leaders are supposed to be virtuous, nice people that, like, people look up to and whatnot. But, like, okay. <laughs> I'm, you know what? I'm actually okay with this. Because it's actually kind of, it's, it's way more interesting than it being like, oh, there's Team Rocket. And they just are all over the place. And in this, I don't know if Lieutenant Surge directly has anything to do with Team Rocket or anything. But, like, certainly Team Rocket-esque. Stealing Pokemon selling them for a profit. Um, I, I, I think, I think... It's, it's an interesting dynamic that really changes things up. And I'm interested to see if there are any other gym leaders that are bad guys. Again, I'm pretty sure Blaine is, but I'm not sure whether that, like, whether I just know that from, like, I've, I've read into some of this manga before. So I, I, but, like, that was a while ago, and I don't know whether it's just, like, I'm remembering that, or whether it's from, whether it's from, the game or anime, I mean, not the anime because he was like a hippie or something. I don't know. Uh, but like from the game or something like that, there was some like lore. He, he definitely had something to do with Mewtwo or Mew. Uh, I don't know. But like, I find it incredibly interesting that the, the, uh, writer decided to make these characters that are supposed to be kind of leaders and like that they're, they're supposed to show the way for these trainers and make make them bad guys and like see, like red i don't even think he got the vermilion city gym badge like he didn't take the, he didn't go into the gym certainly didn't take the gym challenge so i mean he technically beat the gym leader i guess does that count i mean he there is this, some weird things like okay so how does he go to the pokemon league without the gym badges then is that even a plot point? Maybe he doesn't even take... Maybe later on, he doesn't even go to the Pokemon League. I don't know. But I think I think changing these characters and making them bad guys is, you know, honestly a bit more interesting than, oh, okay, so we had one chapter where he... Red fights the Pokemon smugglers and it's just some generic dudes or it's another Team Rocket group. And then he takes on the gym and then there's... Then he moves on. This is like, okay, well, in one single chapter, they were able to turn the idea of gym leaders being a good guy on its head, and at the same time, make you ask, well, what is, what is Red gonna do if he, I mean, he's, his, his journey at this point is just to fill the Pokedex, but like, taking on the gyms has always been a means to, to that end. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's an interesting thing that they're building here. And I'm wondering whether... I'm, I'm interested to see if there are any, any other gym leaders that are bad guys. Straight up, like, just evil dudes. Not just jerks, but evil, evil people. And how does that affect the end of this? Like, uh, the end of Jet Red's journey. How does this go on to be like, oh, well, he's a Pokemon master, but he never took the... Pokemon League on, or did he did he somehow get the badges? I don't know. Either way, that's all I gotta say on this chapter. I thought it was really cool. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and to subscribe so you can keep up with all future videos going on in the future. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye!